Hi, what's going on guys? It's Almond. Welcome back to another Wizard 101 video. I wanted to make one more video before Test Room came out and talk about a few assumptions that I have about the ice tech rate now that I'm like, I spent some time and I thought about it and what the rate could consist of. Um, I know I made a video reacting to the trailer, but I wanted to do, do this video to talk about my gear setup that I'm going to be using on Test Realm. And I'm also going to be talking about some things I assume what's going to happen for the raid. Of course, this is all speculation, but just keep an open mind when I talk about a lot of this stuff. Some stuff I'm concrete about, I feel like. Um, but there is some stuff that I'm just speculating due to the fact of recent updates. So if you do enjoy this type of content, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all that type of stuff. And let's get into today's video. So when it comes to test room, I know a lot of people are going to be wondering what's the setup I'm going to be using. Since I don't know what I'm going to be doing, people are saying, oh, we're just going to have to have multiple hitters and just run around, just test some stuff. So for that reasoning is I am using this build. So I have 8.1K HP. I have 195 damage because you got to remember that we're going based upon PVP stats. So I got 31 res. I got a lot of accuracy due to the fact that I'm scared of mantles. In raid one, we did have some mantles. So having that accuracy just kind of just solidifies it even a little bit more. Got a decent amount of crit, 787. Decent block, 700 or 475. And I have 60 pierce, which is going to play a huge part. And then I use stun resistors. There has been like random chances where I've like just got a stun block off and it's like make to break a fight because the fact that we don't know what's going to be happening in here i feel like i don't really need to resist um, the flat res or block percentage so for that reasoning i'm having stun resist in case they have stun cheats or anything that has anything related to stunning um and there has been a scenario where it's been saving me in raids so for that reasoning i'm keeping in my or keeping stun resist jewels uh pip are 559 perfect pips and no arch mastery on my deck or gear mainly my deck so uh, i'll explain why but i'm just rocking full aeon and when it comes to the pins i have certain pins on and this is where i want to talk about the pin stuff so in raid one we did have outside cards kind of like beast moon where someone has to go defeat the enemy it's like a mini mob and you just kill it and it casts cards onto the vanguard team and the thing is whoever it casts on it also takes the damage that so for that reasoning i had myth pins on which you would expect me to put life pins on but i'm putting on myth pins due to the fact that in case there is a card in the outside fight that might be viable and that's myth damage it might come in clutch but of course i am going to be changing my pins based upon what cards are being used and um, when it comes to that factor i don't have a shield pin in because i feel like they're gonna have stupid uh pierce anyways having me having a shield pin isn't gonna make anything crazy um but accuracy wise i just put on myth um on on test room i'm definitely gonna be switching this to either balance or death depending on uh what i need it for uh if we are using certain shambos i could also switch my pins to those i have plenty of accuracy jewels and i have many options to switch those but just currently what i have preemptively set for test room this is what i have then wand aeon of course a dame aeon with min max jewels fly gob um i know some people are going to be saying why don't you just use the dragoon aoe i don't want to be using these in case these are actually pvp banned in test room because that was the huge gripe in raid one was just dragoon spamming but this also takes up a lot of animation time. So that's why I'm not using this and I'm using Flygob. Ring, we got Aeon. The pet is an interesting pet. So it's a one pip armor skeleton. If I, if I didn't have the one pip armor skeleton, I would be at 99 pips, which is, you know, kind of annoying. You could not worry about the 99 pips. And, you know, if the 1% chance happens and you fail pip, that can make a break or fight. <laughs> so for that reasoning is I am using an armor skeleton. And on the pet, I have Giver, Mighty, Dealer, Reinforce, which some people said that Reinforce can, you know, who knows what they could do to Reinforce. Maybe no PvP or something like that. But we'll just have to wait and see, right? But I still have Reinforce on my pet. And I have Breaker. And just for the memes, I suck it on the Incendia Jewel. We'll see if this ruins the fights. We'll see if this helps the fights. Um, 
But the thing is, this incendiates everything on the field, including hots. So it detonates anything that's on the field. So I don't want to screw up a fight where I randomly get a May cast incendiate and it brings back the boss or something like that. But if for some reason we're using hots, uh, you never know. This could help. But just for the memes, I have it on. I definitely want to be memeing around in, in the raids. I want to test some stuff. I have some certain certain gear that I'm not going to be showing in this video, but I do have some certain gear that I want to test on Test Realm and see if there's if it's any viable. Um, when it comes to the mount, Pierce mount, of course, and then the deck, we're just using Damagura because it gives a uh, block. That's the main uh, story behind it. But definitely, I think there's better options now like the nightmare one's a good option too if you really want the arch mastery and i think there was another one if i remember that gave like certain good stats like the void one i wouldn't get because it doesn't give crit so nightmare is technically a good option it's just i lose out on that accuracy if i don't mind losing out that accuracy for increased a little bit of crit a little bit of block and health but i also get arch mastery it could be viable right it could be viable but i don't see myself using in power but you never know Dude, this could actually help so i do have this as like an option as uh deck setup wise but we'll just wait and see what the other people in the guild want to do but that is my setup for for test realm so if you guys are wondering what am i using for the raids this is what i'm most likely going to be using i might be tweaking some stuff and switching to different gear sets like meyer and trying different uh builds so just keep that in mind but i would definitely watch the stream and uh be on the lookout for that because i probably will be streaming by the time this video comes out so i will be streaming like from the night time all the way to morning and try to get some raids in because time zones and that it's kind of annoying so i kind of have to wake up early to do the raids for you guys you guys will be fine if the test room is tomorrow but if the test room is not tomorrow it'll be kind of annoying <laughs> uh but we'll just have to wait and see now the gears now when it comes to the gear stuff we are done now i wanted to talk about some assumptions of the raid because some people are saying a lot of things and some people have their own opinions but i want to talk about my opinions on the raid right what it what it's going to have that i know it's guarantee and things that i could could happen so guarantee things that are going to be in the raid and and this just has to make sense right is and i'll explain why there has to be drums are coming back mana gains coming back um star chest all that type of system teleporters and those are the three three things i'm 100 sure of jewel drops i would assume that there's a 155 jewels now dropping from those fights now and maybe pins maybe but jewels would make sense because the previous raid had jewels uh scaled to that current raid so obviously i'd say jewels would matter and they would be 155 and uh, those are like my main things 100% and of course spellaments spellaments would be dropping just don't know what spellaments I don't think they'll toss in the Dwyvim spells but I had it as a thought looking back on it it just doesn't make sense for them to put it in because it's way too early they don't want people to get the gear or the the, the spellaments that quick and we don't even know what the spells do at the moment so for that reasoning I'm just like eh, I don't know now let's talk about some other assumptions so uh, I made a notepad of <laughs> things that I, I just assumed were going to be in the raid. As you can see, things Almond assumes in the Azteca raid. And we'll quickly go over it, right? So I just assume there's going to be two pieces of gear, maybe like a Nullity Void equivalent. Um, I would hope that there is a better hat, boots, or wand. Because for PV damage builds, I would want something that's a better best in slot. Or maybe if it's a little bit less damage and it gives a card, I don't know what the gear can consist of. I doubt it would give cards, but it would be somewhat interesting if it did give cards. But I would hope for a better hat, boot, or wand um, when it comes to the max PvE damage builds. And some people are saying that we might have new templates. So as you guys can tell, we talked about the templates in a previous video when it comes to Aeon, Eternal, Nightmire, Skyfair, Nolody, and Void. Some people said they can make two more templates but which templates would they follow they only go upon damage defense and utility how would they break those and make two new templates we'll just have to wait and see if that's the case if there's two new templates well <laughs> another video explaining templates and you guys should be on the lookout for that but 
just right now i don't know what they would go unless they're following the nullity and void templates then but then that becomes an issue is because if the gear is better than nullity and void what's the point of doing the dragon spire raid anymore that becomes a concern so i don't know how the templates would work and some people were saying it could be a direct just copy of skyfair i don't think it will be a direct copy of skyfair because why would they <laughs> why would they do all that for just skyfair gear it, it becomes like a, a problem then if it is skyfair the, here's the problem if if it becomes skyfair what's the point of doing raid 2 then people are gonna be like well for free to play players you know they if they don't want to do or if they don't want to open packs for the skyfair gear understandable but for the people who do have the gear already is it just for the pets is it for the jewels or pins if they have good drop rates it's understandable um is it for the badges like of course new badges but there's gonna be a lot of repeat badges like drums chests, etc or is it for the spell elements that was like a main concern to me if that was a, if if for some reason the raid gear is a direct copy of skyfair and another thing is if it is skyfair gear then the the reagents will just be polygons and pixels so that doesn't mean polygon and pixels are gone completely i'm assuming by the time we get to 170 we'll have new farmable reagents to go with the whole leveling system but then that's like in its own separate video and why people have been complaining about this so that's why i didn't like i don't think it's going to be sky fair i'll be really sad if it is <laughs> um of course we're gonna have new fishing i wouldn't doubt that we don't have fishing i don't think new fish but it'll probably be like reused fish and i wrote right here there could be an option of giving the fish chest a key maybe there's just instead of fish it's just fish chests right and they there's a chance of you getting a key to open some type of miller speeder boss right because i do expect us to have a, a miller speeder boss equivalent because that's one of the trends that they're going to have certain things are going to have to stay in in each raid such as a boss that gives elixirs such as uh, pet mounds for cantrips and some type of key maybe uh, drums of course and chests and the teleporters those are like things that just have to stay in raids because it just makes too much sense for it to not be in multiple raids because certain badges they wouldn't lock it to just raid ones yes like the nullifier and stuff like that that makes sense but when it comes to like drums and stuff like that it just doesn't make sense to be locked to a raid one you know uh i know we'll have some type of thundering elf slash millispeeder boss i've initially just wrote millispeeder boss but um there probably is going to be a thundering elf equivalent and people will definitely find out some strats for that so definitely included that I really do feel like there's going to be four parts of the map. Reason being is it's a pyramid. There's four sides to a pyramid. And it just makes way too much sense. So if there is more than four sides of the map, well, I'm wrong. <laughs> and if the raid's already out by the time you guys see this video, well, I'm even more wrong. Because <laughs> as, as I wrote, this is a speculation or assumptions of what the raid could be. Now this one, take this with a grain of salt, right? This is just my opinion what the raid could be about so i really felt like the raid is gonna have a, a boss or some type of mechanic related to arch mastery right just because the new thing that they introduced in novus talks about arch mastery why wouldn't you want people to test that out in a new raid it just it really just lines up too much in my head but maybe i'm just straight up overthinking this right but I would just really hope that arch mastery does play a part you know but there is some issues with arch mastery prioritizing arch mastery um and the way to prioritize it is by having more cards in your deck if there's more cards in your deck then people are gonna have to build certain decks to pull whatever they need and i don't think people want to have like huge decks that have full of random cards or stuff that they don't even want to use you know um but we'll just have to wait and see because it is going to be prioritizing pvp stats so it's not going to be like pve like every round i would get a school pip you know you got to think of pvp so just keep that in mind um when it comes to that you also have to prioritize your bigger size like i said and then on top of that if arch mastery jewels actually even matter but we'll just have to wait and see because at the moment arch mastery jewels are kind of useless in my opinion so if there's an actual use for this in this fight, well, there you go. 
Um, and then, yeah, if, if there was an Arch Mastery type of Lore Magus fight, then that would make people want to go for either like Dice or Liar. If you don't know what that is, it just Death and Ice. Liar means life and fire, that type of thing. Um, so that's why I'm like, oh, maybe they'll have like a dual school mechanic, like kind of like the bubble cheat in Caramel. Just made that an assumption. You know, if people join late as well, we would have to make sure in test realm no one joins late to any fight because if somebody joins late there could be like that supernova cheat or just kill everybody for joining in late so keep that in mind and then i just yes golden city i doubt it would work i really do but it's worth a shot right <laughs> and then you can't carry incendiate card so that's why i put it on a pet for that reason um, and mainly because I'm saying it won't work is because if you look at the recent trends of all the previous fights in Novus, all like the main bosses that drop Aeon gear have a cheat against uh, Incendiate or they have some type of thing. So like for example, the deck boss, if you try Incendiating, he just heals himself. If you try doing it in Bowser um, or Design Duelist, some people call it Design Duelist, but I call it Bowser. Uh, if you try doing incendiate on there he has like three lives so it just doesn't even matter and then of course the final fight you can't really do it in there it's not really a... actually you can after you get on polymorph but it's not like a consistent thing and then of course the last one is the penguin boss when you kill her she has like a shadow form you have to, i think you have to like kill the minions and you have to deal with the shadow form all that type of stuff so really you can't really incendiate um and then of course the new mire gauntlet did have a boss that just had extra lives so yeah um but yeah pet mounds would be returning of course uh beastman i would really assume the beastman cards and uh, to help with other fights would return it just makes too much sense if that's just only for raid one i'm kind of surprised but i just really feel like these would be returning same thing as the pet mounds the jewels we kind of already talked about and if they do add pins i feel like it would be a big issue because um yeah it would be cool getting pins for your specific school and being able to get them quickly but if people want to play on certain schools to farm pins just for the drops kind of sucks in a way so it's like a double-edged sword in my opinion but i don't know about the pins if they're actually going to be dropping from raids but i feel like the 155 jewels like the health and the accuracy ones would make sense so there's that i don't think there's going to be new cantrips but you know i'm just hoping just hoping uh of course uh, i would assume that there is going to be new pets hopefully azteca themed not just the dragon color change etc i hope to be like some type of new design just we'll see and then i wrote spellman drops i would assume the nova spellments are going to be added to the pool but I don't think the Dwyvan one is going to be added to the pool. I just made an assumption that it could be. But looking back on it, as I said earlier, don't think it's actually going to happen. But hey, you know, if it actually does, well, there's an actual incentive to do the raid if uh, some other situations line up. I'm coping about this too. I really hope keys return. <laughs> I don't know why they're with gold keys. Kind of sucks. I just really hope that they do come back, but I don't think they are. And then pity system. A lot of people were telling me that I guess Cam answered that there will be a pity system. I don't know how true that is, but we'll find out tomorrow if that's true. But yeah, I don't know about that too much. And then uh, I would assume that there's also dual, dual school crafting recipes for all the gear. Maybe later on or they're planning to add it just because they're so focused on dual schooling at the moment. It just makes too much sense to be a bit like have crafting recipes for those of eventually um if not i'll be kind of surprised but we'll see and then this i thought that they would bring something i know we have like the mana gain system where like you have to play drums to keep your mana up i felt like it would be nice for them to add like a health mechanic instead instead of mana instead you have like a a, a health gain type of effect where like there was like some type of poison effect cloud or like the meteors were falling down Maybe that might cause you to lose HP. I was, I was just kind of making assumptions about that. But you never know. Uh, and if it doesn't, well, it's just just aesthetics. Uh, the other thing is Dragoon Amulet Band. So the reason why I wanted to talk about that is because the reason why Raid 1 was so easy was because of 
Dragoon Amets. And this is what I'm talking about for later on. I'm not talking about Raid 1 at towards the beginning when Test Realm came out for Raid 1. No, no, no. I'm talking about way down the line when people start cheesing the fights and just use Dragoon. Um, so that's why I didn't equip the, the amulet on my gear set because of the fact that I feel like they're going to get PvP banned and you're not going to be able to use them in raids. Because it's not. I would hope that they introduce a raid ban soon instead of it just being PvP banned stuff. We'll see later down the line, but at the moment, I'm, I'm just assuming that they're going to put it as a PvP ban. And then gold key gates. I don't really want to talk about this, but it's on the list. It's not happening. But yeah, it's not. The list. And then the last thing is the teleporters. There were teleporters in raid one. Just no one used them because they didn't seem like it was a reason to. But I definitely in raid two, I feel like the teleporters might help because judging by the trailer that feels like a big map <laughs> and if that's a big map i feel like the teleporters might come through and to activate the tele the teleporters it's like these little caltropes things and you need three people to cantrip it to be able to use it so uh we'll just have to wait and see but th these are my final thoughts or final assumptions or whatever you want to call it for whatever's going to happen in the aztec raid but we'll just have to wait and see tomorrow what happens in the raid so definitely stop by the Twitch channel and I will be raiding. I will be giving that answer right now. I will be raiding on Test Realm. I will be trying to raid multiple times throughout the week for you guys so I can make a bunch of content and uh, maybe, maybe, maybe get our first win in Test Realm. We'll just have to wait and see. But that is going to be it for me. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, yeah, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, all type of stuff. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, guys.